Hello everybody, I'm Dave. And I'm going to show you how I use Astro Pixel Processor to process my comet images because we've had a fantastic comet. It's still there, it's still performing, and it's near some really nice galaxies at the moment. So I'm hoping to get out there tonight and get some more, but we'll see. I'm fairly new to Astro Pixel Processor, so this is just what I've sort of worked out from a demo I saw last Sunday and having worked on some images as well. So I thought I'd uh, put this together to show you how I actually use Astro Pixel Processor to process my comet images. Okay, so this is Astro Pixel Processor and when you open it for the first time, it asks you for a working directory. Now, I'm, I haven't found w whether you can set this or not, so that it always opens to the same one. So it's really annoying that you have to go and scroll down to the folder that you want and then uh, find the images that you've taken. So these, these are the ones that I'm going to take. So in this particular folder, so I've selected my working folder, which was on the evening of the 17th of July and click open. So that's now set the main folder that you're going to be working on. Now down the left hand side here is where you actually put all your images that you've taken. Now, you're going to, lots of people are going to say really naughty, naughty Dave, because you haven't taken any registration uh, images, calibration images, dark frames, flat fields. No. I try and keep things as simple as possible. So all I'm going to do is load some light frames. OK, so here we are. And I know that the images that I want and you see all the images that you've taken in there. And I normally save my images as the raw image files, which are the ones I want to process and JPEGs, because you never know when you're going to use these for animations. So the JPEGs are a little bit easier to handle when you're doing that. Uh, so make sure that you tick this box here and you select the file for your particular camera. So I only want to see the Nikon RAW images because that's the ones I'm going to process. Now I'm only going to do a few of the images that I've taken. And these are 10 images um, and they're one minute exposures. And it's going to be 5720 to 5730. So they're the only images I'm going to stack because if you look at my other YouTube video, you will see that the more images you stack, the more the detail in the comet is going to be blurred because of the movement of those that material in the tail. So I'm just going to select those. What's that? 11 images. Okay. And then click open. And then just click OK, OK on these two images. And then that's it. That's loaded all the images and you can see them all down here. So if you click, double click on any of those images, you see the image appear in this screen here. You can see I've got a lot of light pollution, despite the fact I went out to a reasonably dark site to get these. Um, so you can see there's a bit of a green background, which is a bit of a pain. But we'll sort that out later. So once all those images are loaded in, you don't need to do calibrate. I've not touched that at all and go into analyze star. So what we want it to do is to investigate all the images and see where it can see stars across the field of view. And I've left it on the automatic stars target and it's looking for about 500 stars. And if you go analyze stars and you can see the list starting to appear here and it starts to look through all those frames to count the number of stars that it can find in that particular image with that setting. So you see 504 stars found in this one, 502 in the next one, and so on and so forth. So it goes through each of those images and it will count the number of stars it can find at that setting. So it takes a little while to work its way through. Okay, nearly three quarters of the way through that now. Not far now. Okay, and the uh, bell tells you that it's definitely the name. So we've analyzed the stars. It's found a number of uh, stars in each of those images. And then the next tab is register. Now here's where you change the registration mode depending on the target. 
in most cases, you should set it to normal. But in this case, because we've got a comet, the comet is moving against the star background. So we're going to select comet registration mode. And this is the beta version I'm using here. And I think in the version that's going to come out after this, it's going to be a, an ability to stack on the comet, stack on the stars, and stack on the comet and the stars so you get both and you don't get the star trails. Okay. So select comet. So what that's going to do now when it stacks the images or stack on the comet itself, but it needs to know where the comet is. So if we go, yeah, so just to check, I've not touched any other settings in there and then start registration. What that's doing now is now looking at all those images and trying to register them against one another. And of course it doesn't know where the comet is. So it gets to this point where you see an image appear and you can see at the top of the screen, it says click on the nucleus. So the nucleus is here. So you click roughly where the nucleus is and you get a zoomed up view. And then the box actually moves onto the nucleus, which is really handy because if the nucleus is here and you click next to it, you can see it clicks on that box, but it's actually here. So if I click near it, that's not quite on, then there you go. It's now detected the uh, nucleus and it's put a box nicely around the nucleus where it thinks the central part of the nucleus is. Once you've done that, you then need to click the confirm button at the top here. And then what it will do, it will look at all the other images that you've selected and it will work out where the nucleus is for each of those images which makes it really, really nice and easy. If for some reason it doesn't find the nucleus of the comet, the image will pop up and it will do you, it will get you to do the same thing again. The, the image will actually pop up. You click on the nucleus, tell it where it is and then click confirm and then it will carry on down the stack. So that makes it really nice and easy to register your comet positions. <laughs> And that tells us it's all been done. OK, I haven't touched normalize at all. And then integrate is where we're going to actually stack those images together. And there's a couple of ways of stacking your or a few ways to stack your images together on this button here. And you've got average, median, maximum and automatic. If you select the automatic where it tells you here what those options are, if you put your mouse over, it's not going to pop up now, is it? But if you do average, uh, what that will do, because the comet's moving, it's stacking on uh, the comet, your stars will tend to blur out. Same with median. But if you use a maximum, what you will get as the stars move across the field of view, as the comet moves, they will produce star trails. So it depends on what effect you want. I'm going to have maximum and I'm going to make sure that I get the star trails in because I quite like star trails that show um, where the comet is moving okay so i haven't really touched anything else along here and then right at the bottom of that menu you've got integrate and then at this point it asks you what the name of the object is so i'm going to call it c 2020 f3 neo wise and date it was taken 2020 -0717. And then the date of processing, process, whoop, can't spell, processed 2020 is it today? Three, Ooh. three. And then click OK. And what that's doing now, that's now going through each of those images and it's stacking them according to the position of the comet. There you go, it's on the fourth image already. This is lots of detail pops up on the screen that I don't understand, but you know, it's doing its thing.
as you can see, this takes a while now, but it's doing a lot of work. There's a lot of uh, processing going on here to actually get the final image. So what I'll do, I'll stop there and uh, I'll meet you when it's finished. So here we are, the bell tells us that the process is finished. So there we can see uh, the image on the screen. So I'm gonna click scale to fit up here. So we see the whole thing. So there's our stacked comet image and you can see the star trails that I selected. Okay, so that's the processing of the image itself. So we've stacked the image and now we're gonna get rid of that light pollution. So under tab nine, we've got tools and we've got remove light pollution. It says, do you want to remove light pollution in the current image, in the image viewer? Well, why would I click the button? I don't understand why that's there. We're gonna go yes. So here we go. And then what you need to do, you need to select five boxes on the image um, to highlight the sky. So I'm gonna avoid the edges. You can see there's some um, stacking errors around the edge. So I'm going to select a few boxes away from the comet that's going to tell the software something about the gradient that's on this image already. I'm going to avoid the tails of the comet. Yep, so I'm going to just select a few and I'm going to avoid because I know the dust tower is on the bottom right. So I'm going to avoid that. So I've got my five boxes selecting parts of the sky and then click calculate. Okay, so that's now taken out most of that background and I click OK and save. What you actually should have said was um, when you save the image, when you've actually processed the image, it says it's a FITS file. I haven't actually discovered how to change the settings so it says it's a TIFF so I can um, edit that directly. But once you've done the light pollution, if you click that file name and click OK, you can actually choose to save it as a TIFF. So that's what I normally do. And I click OK, I'll just leave that as a default setting and then click OK. And that's now saving that image with the light pollution removed as a TIFF image. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go into Affinity Photo and we're gonna open the image that I've just produced. There it is. And you can see it doesn't look as good as it did on the, uh, when we was looking at it in. Uh, Astro pixel process. So the first step here I'm going to do is to do the curves. And if we do a curve on that, bring up the brightness, but definitely don't let it touch the top there. Bring that down nicely so that none of that curve ever touches the top. Okay, and click merge. So we've got a comment here. We've got a quite a bright background, but we you remember we have some stacking artifacts around the edge. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the uh, original ratio. And I'm just going to crop the outer edges just to get rid of those. There we go. And then the other thing we need to do at this stage is to change the document. So we need to convert format ICC profile from the document menu and then change it to a 16 bit image rather than 32. We're losing data, but a lot of the tools we use won't work unless we do that. Okay, so now if we go to filters, plugins, and I use Pro Digital Software Astro Flat Pro, which is absolutely fantastic. It saves me a lot of grief. And there you go. So you adjust these slider settings, and I've adjusted these already for what I'm going to do. Edge cleanup, we don't really need much of that. Noise reduction, we don't want too much of that. And I'm going to click OK. And what you see, the background immediately almost disappears. It's a fantastic bit of software. OK, so once you've done that, go back into your curves tool and then increase the curve again. So take that little bit more of a sigma curve down there. But we don't want to do it quite as severe as we did before. And you can see the comet is really starting to come to life. 
okay so you can see that quite nicely it's got a bit of a greenish tinge to it so the other filter i use is deep sky colors hasta la vista green and for this particular one i'm going to use a medium filter and that's going to take a lot of the green out of the image there you go so a lot of the greens come out of that image so what i'm going to do now i'm going to create a duplicate layer and i'm going to turn that duplicate layer into a luminosity layer so we've got two identical layers laying on top of one another the bottom one is a normal layer and the top one is now a luminosity layer and what a luminosity layer does it actually locks the level of gray showing in that pixel it doesn't give any color information to the image at all so any color information is coming through from the bottom image so we go down to the bottom image and under vibrance you open these vibrance tools and i use the saturation so you give it about 25 to 30 percent increase in saturation click merge there we go and what that's done that's increased the saturation of the background image so you can start to see the colors through it's not quite enough and the good thing about uh, infinity photo is you can actually save your settings so i've saved one at 31 percent, which i find works really well double click that it's already there click merge and it, it goes through that three or four times just to get the color up of course don't go too mad because you get too much color the other thing you'll see is that because I haven't used any calibration frames, you'll see there's little bright spots, little colored spots in there. And the way to get rid of those is to go into filters, noise, dusts, and scratches. If you go into there and you increase the range just slightly, you get rid of quite a lot of those. Click apply. There you go. We might be able to get that a little bit brighter as well. Don't forget the bottom image is giving the color information. The top image is actually adjusting the level of brightness in the picture. So if we want to make changes to the brightness, we have to select the upper lane. So click on curves again, move that out of the way so you can see what effect is happening on your image. And frustratingly, sometimes you can't actually see the histogram in these um, views but if you look at the top of the uh, software you can actually see the histogram in there and it's a really frustrating part of the software that i don't like um, but you can see the histogram in there quite nicely so click merge and there you go we're starting to get a fairly nice uh, comet image and i might want to go back to the lower layer and increase the saturation just a little bit more merge that as well and there we go obviously i'll take a lot more time over getting the best out of my image but there you can see how astro pixel processor and affinity photo can get really nice images out of a dslr image without too many faffs around with calibration frames etc etc there's lots of people who will probably say no dave you should take calibration frames and yes if i had time i probably would but uh yeah i try and keep things as simple as possible so hope this helps you guys enjoy <laughs>